lacrosse coach at the University of Utah. And then, as you guys mentioned, during the summer months from June to September, I'm a professional lacrosse player for the Archers Lacrosse Club of the Premier Lacrosse League. So the PLL was founded a couple of years ago. It's a newer league, very exciting product. If you haven't watched a game, I would highly recommend it. We play on NBC Sports. A lot of our games are televised. So, yeah, it's a lot of lacrosse for me. But like I said, I love it. So very fortunate to be where I am. Yeah, let's lead off with the PLL. It is, cool. it is a fun league, and they set it up interestingly. Instead of the traditional, hey, this is the, the Baltimore Bayhawks and the city owning a team, it's a traveling club. And from my perspective as a fan, the objective is simply grow the sport. So we're going to Dallas. We're going to all these places, Utah, that wouldn't traditionally have a professional team, but they're exposing to the league. So can you sum up the, the league itself? and their mission, their goal, and why this traveling tournament style of professional games. Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's interesting as you look at, um, you know, professional sports in, in 2021, right? It almost seems like the athletes are bigger than the organizations. You know, people follow LeBron James no matter what team he's playing for. You know, people follow Tom Brady no matter what city he's in. Um, so I think some of that has to do with, with the idea that they had of, of this tour based model. And you see it in other sports, right? Like the PGA tour or NASCAR, um, you know, you just allow more eyes to be on the sport and attend an in-person game, which again, lacrosse is such an exciting, fast paced sport. Um, you know, compare it to football, right? Like football, an average play is like four seconds or five seconds. Um, and then you have a break for like a minute lacrosse is just nonstop, right? The only time the play stops really is when the ball goes out of bounds. And that's, that's the five second break. Um, so it's fast paced the, the PLL has done a great job of creating buzz. Um, you know, it's almost like a little mini festival at the stadiums that we travel to. Um, so I think that was part of their idea. Um, I think their five year plan, I think down the road, they're going to look at, at potentially, having those geographically located teams um, as the markets be- get bigger, right? We're going to be traveling to new cities this summer. We just got an email with our locations for the 2021 season. And I'm really excited. There's some, some new places that I haven't been, um, you know, and again, there's lacrosse is now slowly becoming a national sport, right? Mm-hmm. You looked at it 20 years ago, it was all East coast. It's Baltimore, Philly, Long Island, Connecticut, you know, now I'm, I'm coaching lacrosse at the University of Utah. Who would have thought, right? We're the first uh, men's Pac-12 lacrosse university. So the game is growing. It's, it's really cool. And, um, you know, maybe one day we'll, we'll travel overseas and play an international game, right? There's, there's some support in England. Japan is a country that absolutely loves lacrosse. Um, a lot of professional players have traveled there to coach clinics and, um, you know, obviously see their, their amazing culture. So, yeah, like you mentioned, just a, a way for more people to see it and get involved. I think this is the advent of social media. I mean, really, social media is brought in, and now, now uh, individual athletes have so much more of a spotlight than they ever had before. I mean, it was so much based on teams, and now it's like, look at the individuals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's, you know, again, just to jump in, that's something that the PLL has totally pushed. They're almost like a media company first. You know, they do such a good job of helping us promote our social channels, right? They know that we can get sponsorships or, you know, interviews or, um, you know, grow our, our following with amazing content by telling stories, right? The former league that I played in, which was called Major League Lacrosse, um, which is where I played the first seven years of my career, um, you know, the game would finish and I'd have to go on, you know, Getty images and try to find like a picture of myself playing, you know, and I would still, I put it up on my Instagram with the get like the Getty tag on it. Now we use an app called Greenfly. right after the game is over. I open up my phone and there's 300 pictures right from the game and videos and slow-mo highlights that we can just put on our social channels. Right. So like you mentioned, promoting ourselves within the PLL is they've done a really good job with that. Um, I mean, at least in the uh, the NFL, their reasoning was that they never wanted to promote players because they never want a player to be bigger than the organization. So then, that if a you know yeah. player gets into some contract deal, have you ever noticed that like instantly the fans just shit all over the player? But yeah, when a player or, or when a team cuts a player, they're like, oh, that guy sucked. But then if a player goes, hey, I want more money, I'm holding out. Like that guy's such a piece of shit. 
<laughs> and they did this on purpose. So that's why like the advent of social media, like you talked about LeBron James and all these players now have a platform at which to be able to provide this stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, the NFL has fought against this and still fights against it. I mean, just, you know, so it's cool to see that there's a league actually pushing this forward and being able to put, and I, same thing for me, I played in the NFL for 10 years. And uh, dude, I still to this day have to go buy pictures of myself off Getty Images. And Incredible. I'll email them and be like, hey, is there any way I don't have to pay $1,000 for this? Or can I pay you 500 <laughs> And like normally they'll be like, hey, it's because it's you. Um, I'll, I, I can buy them for cheaper. But I remember being like, how fucked is this? The yeah. fact that these people went and took pictures of me at the game and they, they're selling me back the pictures and the NFL doesn't do anything to provide it for us. So it's just uh, it, it's cool to see that leagues are actually taking a different approach, putting the players first and basically yeah. celebrating what is their big, biggest commodity. Yeah. And that was their that was their mantra right off the bat because the founders of the league, Paul Rabel being one of them, who's I'm sure if you guys follow lacrosse or have heard of lacrosse, lacrosse you you know who Paul Rabel is. He's the biggest name in our sport. Um, him and his older brother Mike, who was in Silicon Valley for five six years working kind of in the tech business, like they had this plan to put the PLL out there, and they made it a reality and their mantra right off the bat was we're going to put our players first. Right. And I've definitely seen the repercussions of that in a positive way over the, the past two years. I mean, there's always going to be flaws. Like if you want to nitpick, you're, you're going to find, you know, athletes will always find a way to like complain. I feel like about certain things, but that's not really how I look at it. I look at it as my salary is tripled. Um, you know, we get equity in the PLL. Um, we get healthcare if we want it, you know, and, we're playing games on national TV with amazing commentary and HD cameras. Like that's it. <laughs> that's if you just would have said those right off the bat, I would be like, okay, I'm in, where do I sign? So it wasn't, it wasn't really a tough decision for me to, to want to leave. And now the MLL has, they've merged. So there's just now one singular league at the professional outdoor level, which is really good because for a couple of years there, it was like, there was this league and this league and it was just kind of awkward, honestly, for fans. So now it's, it's it's easy. It's good. Much cleaner uniforms yeah. for the PLL, in my opinion, as a fan. Yeah. What was it like for, did you choose the PLL? Did you have to make that choice? Or did they seek you out to say, hey, we're going after player XYZ. We're bringing them in and paying them first. Did, did they draw you in, attract you? Or were you left to make a choice once this league started up? Uh, it was, they, they sought players out. Um, and I think they had them in maybe in three tiers. And I've had a previous relationship with Paul. Um, we played on Team USA together in 2014 and 2018. So, you know, we're friendly. And when he was pitching it, you know, he pitched it to myself and my other two assistant coaches out here, Will Manny and Adam Gittleman, who also play on the Archers, uh, which is amazing. We'll, we'll get into that later, I'm sure. But you know, it was, it was cool. It was a great opportunity. And he listed those things that I talked about and, it's not like, you know, if you would have told me like, I'm going to pay you to play in a lacrosse game at any point in my life, I'd be like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> I don't care. Like, I don't care about anything else, but it did get to a point where, you know, after playing six, seven years, you know, winning a championship, it's like, okay, can we like legitimize this? Like, and I still have to tell people kind of, you know, what the MLL is like where I play and, you know, I just think they've done a better job of legitimizing professional lacrosse. And that's, that feels good to be a part of as a player. I'm going back. I'm a loaded freight train and I'm right on track. I'm 